Tech! For those of you who watched my last video on this topic, there was still a ton of examples I'd yet to touch on. For my stance on things, I probably had around 2-3 to three videos worth of games that my brothers and I played in other games. Some were silly challenges, while others were more in-depth storylines that we created amongst our characters. This video will be about more of these games we played. I brought What's With Games along for the ride, and he'll be sharing his experiences and thoughts as well. Without further ado, let's dive into some of the games we create in other games. Starting off, probably one of the dumbest games we played was in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Now, this game type was super dumb, but totally awesome at the same time. Essentially, you would set your character size to Mega, their body to Metal, and the gravity to Heavy. If you wanted to make it twice as awful, you would turn speed to fast. Now, the kicker is that this game type, which we never officially named, could only be played at 75M. If you got hit off the stage at all, there was a good chance you were dead since your recovery jumps did next to nothing. Later on, after altering the stage editor, this game type evolved into something even more bizarre. Essentially, we play this now with four players on a single platform. Now, only one character could actually stay on this platform, and most of the time, you just fell to your death as fast as possible. Each person in this game would have around 30 lives, as opposed to the three lives we had at 75M. We always created the silliest of fighting scenarios within Smash, and this one was probably the king of them. Another notable one was a snake-only match held within a maze of conveyor belts. I have no words for that one. It was awful. So awful. In Ocarina of Time, my brothers and I actually divided the land of Hyrule up into three regions that each of us governed. Now, this may seem strange, because once the game is completed, there isn't much to do. But our creativity kept the game going. Each brother wore a different colored tunic and had control over several dungeons and temples within their domains. I had control over the Shadow Temple and the Water Temple, and my tunic color was blue. The goal of this game was to infiltrate the other person's base and essentially spy on what they were doing. We made up storylines for each temple, and oftentimes the goal would be to reach the end and release bottle bugs on the floor. These bottle bugs were actually spying robots, or at least in the minds of children they were. We would also wreak havoc with Din's fire and slay the monsters of the dungeon as a way to strike against our other siblings. Honestly, there wasn't really an end goal for any of this. We just enjoyed the game so much that we didn't want it to end. And this was the case for a lot of games we invented. Halo 2 was probably the first game I had played where a made-up game type was beyond the scope of what my brothers and I did. Of course, this metagame of sorts is what people refer to as zombies. Zombies was essentially an On Your Honor Team Slayer match where the green team were the zombies and the other team were the humans who were trying to survive. All zombies use energy swords, and all humans use bullet-based weapons. Most notably starting off with a short-range shotgun, which made things more difficult. The game actually started out with one zombie who tried to hunt down a member of the opposing team. If this zombie landed a kill, then that defeated player had to swap to the zombie team, and now there were two zombies. The game ended if all humans were converted into zombies, or if the human team managed to land 255 kills, which was the max kill count. Reaching 255 kills was super difficult though, as ammo was scarce and your only real hope of doing so was to get a machine gun warthog. We often played at Foundation, as it gave the humans the best chance of survival. I remember this game fondly because we would round up 16 players and head over to my brother's friend's house and just play for 12 hours straight on the weekend. It was players of all different ages, but that's what made it fun. There was an element of safety if you were left alive with a player who was better than you, and you often learn a lot from fighting beside them. The Rage Quits were the best thing ever as well, as I remember the closest anyone ever coming to winning this game was 254 kills, just one shy of seizing victory. This player had a warthog in the back of a room in Foundation, and was constantly spraying bullets out of the room. We moved the metal grating in the hallway by repeatedly punching it until we used it to charge into the room, to shield us from the gunfire as we swarmed in for the kill. This player shrieked loudly as he was overrun by 15 zombies, but we didn't get the kill because his warthog exploding counted as a suicide. However, shortly after he respawned in the center of the level, his fate was sealed. It was impossible to defend himself from all sides, and he ended up getting stuck in an air vent which threw him down into a pit of zombies and ended his spree, just shy of needing one kill. I will always remember this moment because it was one of the most amazing gaming experiences I had as a child, as no one ever came close to winning before. 
Super Smash Bros. is a great place to make your own rules because of the freedom the game gives you. After all, in Special Smash you can augment your characters with all sorts of neat stuff, and in Stage Creators you can make stages that accommodate specific types of battles you want to make. One of my favorites is using these cannons in Smash Wii U to build what I call Basketball. The stage is flat, but above the stage we have all these cannons set up. Landing in any of them results in being shot back onto the stage. It's virtually impossible to fly off the side how one would normally be KO'd in Smash. However, these cannons right here are angled so that landing in them will always result in a KO. Instead of trying to rack up percentage and hitting the opponent off the side, it becomes your goal to hit the opponent into the cannon to ensure victory. One of my favorite examples of a metagame is the Pokemon Nuzlocke. Most people are probably at least familiar with this game type. Players must catch the first Pokemon they find on each route and they cannot catch any other Pokemon. If a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead and can no longer be used. Players are encouraged to nickname every Pokemon in order to develop a stronger bond with them. Nicknames, along with permadeath, really amplifies the relationship you develop with your creatures, which makes it especially tense when you're at the end of a battle. It's even more heartbreaking when an unexpected critical hit completely ends the game for you. It sounds so masochistic describing it, but it's honestly one of the most engaging experiences I've ever had. Even within the Nuzlocke, tons of people have developed all sorts of other emergent rules, ranging from never using the Pokemon Center, only being able to use the Pokemon Center a limited number of times, only being able to use a certain type of Pokemon, and many more. There's no shortage of ways to play, especially in a game as expansive as Pokemon. One game that blurs the line between game and metagame is Tabletop Simulator. The game is as the name implies. It simulates a tabletop on which you can do pretty much anything you want. You could play a game of Go Fish or Parcheesi. You can even make up your own games. But if this is just a simulation of a tabletop, is it really a game within a game if you're playing something like Go Fish when you could easily play that game on a real tabletop? That's mostly just a philosophical question to get those brain gears moving. Don't, don't think about it too hard, unless like, you want to, I guess. Stretching the boundaries of games and their metagames are the mods people produce for existing games. Some might argue that this isn't a metagame, as it codes a new infrastructure for the game to follow rather than giving players internal rule sets, but just like Tabletop Sim, I think that's more of a philosophical question. Anyway, when people mod an existing game, they make a new game, but some might not realize just how successful these mods can be. For example, the Stanley Parable started out as a Half-Life 2 mod before getting its own HD remake and full release. The same can be said for Counter-Strike. The first Counter-Strike game was a Half-Life mod that built enough momentum to get its own series. And of course, the biggest one is probably Dota. Before World of Warcraft, Blizzard worked on three RTS games, Warcrafts 1, 2, and 3. The third one had a famous mod known as Dota, which stands for Dawn of the Ancients. The success of this mod eventually catalyzed the creation of games like League of Legends, Dota 2, Heroes of New Earth, and many more. Today, these are some of the most popular games in the world, all of which started from people emergently playing games in ways not always intended by the developers. To come back to a personal example, probably my favorite games to impose my own rules into would be the Left 4 Dead series. I made some good friends playing it online, and we would always make our own challenges on these games all the time. Once we played through an entire campaign without killing a single zombie. Because the game has friendly AI, they would need to attack the zombies for us while we just casually strutted along. We only did this once though, because it wasn't quite as fun as it sounds. One frequent thing we did was we would get to the end of the sacrifice campaign, but rather than completing the mission, we would just hold out for as long as we could. It was different from the game's internal survival mode, because we would have access to the bridge where we were able to hold out for much longer, sometimes even up to a whole hour. Speaking of survival mode, another game we would play would involve going to dead center on survival mode and playing without stopping movement. We could move any direction we wanted, but we just had to keep going. We would only stop if we needed to heal, but other than that we would run infinitely. We actually managed to get pretty good doing this, to the point at which we'd actually get better scores doing this than we would playing the game normally. There's still plenty of other instances of games we created in other games, but we'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. We branched out a bit in this video to discuss the concept of metagames and other instances of games within games. What other games can you think of that fit into this category? Did you invent any games when you were younger that you still remember today? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I want to thank CJ from What's With Games for helping out with this video. CJ was one of the first people I met when starting YouTube over again, and his channel has a lot of very neat videos I definitely recommend. He analyzes elements and features of games and goes pretty in-depth into each concept. Videos like What's With Runners, What's With Health, and What's With Mario Party, which is a personal favorite because what is with Mario Party? So frustrating. Anyways, I highly recommend giving his channel a whirl, and you can find links in the description and at the end of this video. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this metagame venture into the past. If you'd like to join me in my YouTube voyage and continue to celebrate the silly games I invented as a kid, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You made it to the end of the video, 
But wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you liked this video, I highly recommend checking out another one of my videos on the left. Or perhaps you'd like to swing over to the world of What's With Games. I've included one of their videos on the right, and I highly recommend checking it out. As always, there's a slew of other videos on my channel too. So regardless, I hope you enjoy.